Hello, welcome to another FCAR Guy video. Today I'm going to replace the battery in the FF. Uh, it's getting to the point now where uh, even with the battery tender connected, it's just not holding charge and the battery tender itself is struggling to keep the charge up. Um, I'm fairly confident that it's the original battery. I can't be entirely sure until I actually remove it. Um, I'm sure it will have a sticker or, or something on it. So. Um, if you have done any research on FFs, you'll know that they're particularly uh, susceptible to electrical failure messages on the dash with low voltage. I'm just getting a little bit sick and tired of seeing that sort of stuff. It clears as soon as you drive the car for a couple of minutes, it goes, but I'd rather just have a better battery in it. Um, the battery itself that I've gone for is a Varta battery. I've gone with an AGM type. Uh, I don't really know how to exp explain the difference other than one's a wet system, one's a dry system. So one has got reservoirs full of uh, battery acid. This one seems to uh, hold its acid around um, some sort of like pads or something. I, I don't quite know what it is, but essentially an AGM is a better battery. Uh, and it's the standard battery in any car that has auto stop start. Mine doesn't have that, um, but it's meant to be better for cars with stop start. You know, that constant thing of the uh, the starter motor having to run all the time. And that's the model that I've gone for. So I'm just about to make a start, uh, and what I've done is just crack the windows down a couple of inches either side because uh, obviously when you when you open the door that would naturally go down um, a centimeter or so so just saves me uh, damaging the glass uh, and I've just popped the boot open just in case I need that obviously if you forgot there is a, a manual way to do that but it's a bit undignified climbing through the boot so boots open windows down and we shall make a start. I don't know if the battery is on the same side of the car for uh, left and right hand drive cars. I might be imagining this, but I could have sworn I've seen some uh, left hand drive cars with the uh, battery on the opposite side to the steering wheel. So mine is a right hand drive car with the battery on the opposite side to the to the steering wheel um, all you need is flat blade and it's just a quarter of a turn or maybe half a turn there you go to release it there's only two of those then that lifts and pulls toward the car and then out now that reveals a part of the battery there's a cover over the top here the two release tabs, you just pull, push them towards the front of the car and then you can lift that up and off. Um, that is most of the positive terminal. There seems to be uh, what looks like an isolation switch here, which earths to the body isolation switch and then that goes down to the other end of the battery to the earth uh, terminal now if you have a look at it I can only see about half the battery here the other half is under here um, as ever if you've watched any of my videos I've again not bothered to do any research on this I'm just jumping straight in so I don't know whether people would normally take everything off I'm guessing there's not much room in there and the battery is covered in a heat shield I don't want to damage that I'm just going to try and take off uh, this section because clearly it's going to be in the way and it is just plastic so yeah let me um, just fiddle around with this sort of stuff and I'll I'll come back and update you So when you 
take that off all it does is loosen this terminal so that it releases off of there you do want to do that and then just try and tuck it away because it has a natural uh, it wants to basically go back to there you don't want that to happen while you're trying to work on it um, there are two 10 mil uh, nuts on the top of those uh, take them off uh, just a, a note when you're um, when you're loosening those off just get them right to the ends um, and then do it with your hands because if it drops down there who knows what lays beyond there um, it would probably be gone forever so yeah just do the last bits with your hands and then that that is now loose uh, next figure this out um, I know that these are 13s and the rest are 10s. I don't know how much I have to take off. I'm guessing at the very least this is probably the first one that has to come off. Uh, I'll update you. I'm not sure if you have to remove that one. It's probably just easier to take that one off anyway. Uh, two Phillips head screws to take that one off and then on the actual positive terminal directly on the battery itself that is a 10 mil and then you can wiggle this left and right while pulling up and that comes up and let's have a look this is my first look at the battery so oh, I don't know if that's if that model number is a date maybe 12 it's a 2012 car, but I think it's a, it is going to be the original battery. It's interesting, it says stop start on it as well. I wonder if this is actually an AGM battery. That would be very interesting, because I've, I've never been able to find a clear answer on whether or not I've got an AGM battery or not. Um, but of course, if you have a battery tender, you need an AGM tender. Uh, so I've got a C-Tech, which is what Ferrari ones are anyway. <clears throat> I've got a C-Tech MX 5.0 and it has its own mode for AGM. You have to select AGM. So of course I haven't been selecting AGM because I didn't think I had an AGM battery. I still don't think I do. But then... If you look at the actual Ferrari one, which is SeaTac, it says battery charger for 12 volt lead acid batteries, which is not an AGM type. Well, this is going to be interesting. Okay. All right, well, I'm not. Um, I'm not going to attempt to take that out before. I take off some of this trim, so uh, looks like we've got um, like Torx screws here. I'll find out what these are, take this bit off, and uh, I'll update you as usual. So remove the uh, weather strip that just actually pulls completely off. You've got. Uh, these are TX30. Uh, There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. And then hidden in here, that's quite difficult to see. It's, it's under when, when you take that weather strip off. Uh, there's a, a little... Uh, hex screw. I couldn't get any of my tools into it other than an actual Allen key. Um, and apologies, I don't know what size that is because it doesn't say. But uh, yeah, Allen key to get that off. Oh, there we go. Right, 
certainly gives us a bit more space. <laughs> don't know if I have to take all that off. I'm sure I don't. I'm sure that's that's enough of a sort of aperture to pull that out. Let's have a look. Okay, so a <laughs> couple of things. It's, as you can see, still not out yet. It's really tricky to get out. Um, I've used a clamp to pull the battery terminal uh, thing out of the way. The negative terminal sort of points that way and I feel like that is also in the way so I've removed that. That's a 13 mil bolt. Um, the other thing is you need some sort of leverage so move that out the way you can see this bit of heat shield just pulls up enough that you can pull back one of the bat uh, the battery's handles because you need something to pull on it um, and this pipe I don't know if it's the pipe that's in the way I think it's just this there I'm going to see if this um, little holder for the pipe comes out and I might have to sort of use one hand to pull that out the way but yeah so far it's really tough okay so you rejoin me with the battery removed yes I'm out of breath that's absolutely insane the, <laughs> the amount of effort that it takes to get out you just can't get a proper grip on the battery to get underneath it um, I did loosen this off. I, I don't think it makes a difference because uh, all it does is just loosen off the top bit, but of course it's the bottom bit that's in the way. So yeah, I, I don't think that really made any difference. Although I could see this flexing uh, maybe about a centimeter or so, but I think it does that anyway. Um, I removed that clip that holds uh, this out the way. It just screws on, so you just um, anti-clockwise screw it off with your hand. Push the pipe back with your hand. You need every little bit of space. I feel like, you remember this? Let's take that off. You remember this cable? I felt like that. That was in the way, not the, the end, but the, the, the cable itself. There's not enough light, but you know, where it is down here, there's just too many things in the way. I don't know how to tell you how I did it. I just, it seems like it's absolutely impossible to get out, but it does eventually get out. Your first step is to pull it out that tray. That tray on the edge here, it's about two, uh, 20 mil deep. Once you can pull it enough out of that tray, so you've only got to lift it up 20 mil, and then it can, the battery then sits on the edge of it. Once you get to that point, you just keep slowly pulling up and f towards the front of the car, up, forward, up, forward. Now what I did is I actually got, I climbed inside the engine bay and I had one foot on here and I had my knee resting there uh, because I you know I didn't want to be leaning you'd just be putting so much weight on this and that's how I did it yeah wow I can't believe how difficult that is to get out hopefully it's not as bad to put back in um, I'm quite short too so I had to use that as a step to get in so there's the old one. So there's, um, let me turn it around again. So this is sort of what it's like with the um, the inlet manifold here and the, the side of the wing, the car here. This section here was what I was talking about where it just lifts up. See, it's just a fold there and it's enough for you to pull that handle out. You can't pull it all the way back because there's a button 
here and although I can undo that now you couldn't undo that while it was in the car okay um, I'm gonna swap all this over now oh look at that nice nice quick release it's literally the easiest part of the job so far yeah I reckon that would that be third month of 2012? I don't know, but that's the original battery. Genuine Ferrari battery. It does have a, a month and year on here, but I can't see. There's no indentation of of anything. The only marks that are near it are scratch near. Well, it's not going to be four, is it? Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to say that's the original battery. And it's not AGM because you can see the wet cells, the breather ports for them. Interesting, it's come from USA, from Michigan. <laughs> anyway. Oh, what? Hang on a sec. AGM? What the hell? Probably confused now. No, that's not an AGM battery. Is it? Oh, I'm confused. That can't be an AGM battery. If it's an AGM battery, why do I have a non AGM charger for it? Oh, God, I'm confused. Anyway, there's an AGM battery going back in it. Maybe if someone's watching this and can answer why the hell I've got an AGM battery with wet cells on the top, I, I can't understand that. Anyway, let's get this swapped over. Reinstallation's actually a lot easier. Um, do the same thing again. Pull the cover up so you've got a handle, tuck the cover back in. Um, I didn't have to <laughs> climb back into the car to do it. It just drops back in. And it's the reverse where you wiggle forward, drop down, wiggle forward, drop down. Yeah, it's, it's a lot easier making sure that you've got uh, these things are out the way so that they don't pierce. The... Oh no. Oh. oh, that's fine. Comes back up. Phew. I thought that was lost forever. Um, I'll figure that out after. Yeah, making sure that, that doesn't pierce the heat shield. Um, that uh, extra positive cable I was talking about, I tucked, you can just see it under there, I tucked that right out the way. Uh, and is it possible to get that back? It is, yep, that's fine. Yeah, I, just, I, I can't explain why it's so difficult to get out. All I can tell you is you will try to pull this out and think, nope, it's not possible, it's not possible to get this out. But you just keep trying and it might take you five minutes to move it. I don't know, a couple of millimetres, but every couple of metres you move it, a couple of millimetres that you move it out, it gets easier and easier and easier. So just keep at it and it will come out. Um, and it does get to the point where it is almost sitting upright and it does, it just comes out. So yeah, installation is just the reverse now. Um, that was a lot easier, so I assume this is going to be much easier. I'm going to lift that up. Tuck that back in, tuck that back into there. <clears throat> I'm going to put this back on to there, do those nuts up. Uh, for me, I've got to put these screws back in, but you don't have to worry about that. Reconnect the positive terminal and uh, we'll go from there. So I've got, uh, I've got these bolts, the 10 mils, done back up again. Um, FYI, they don't like pinch tight when they're done. Um, think you could just keep tightening them and then over tighten them and perhaps damage the battery uh, or bend this so just use your common sense and tighten it to the point where the battery just doesn't move anymore um, and I, I suppose they should have this uh, a more or less equal amount of thread popping out the top of them mine look like they've got about just under 10 mil poking through the top um, I've attached this the 10 mil two Phillips head screws here and reattached that cable as well with the 12mm. 
uh, reattached this as well because remember I discovered that was sort of in the way that's a 12 mil and I think you're ready for contact I can hear stuff spring into life Obviously got a cover to go back on there uh, afterwards, but I think what I'll do is I'll put the rest of this cover back on. Yep, I don't know if you guys heard that, but that was the, I think that's the gearbox. <sighs> we have power. I've not charged this battery, I've I've just stuck it in, in whatever state it was shipped to me in. And we've got, what's that, uh, 10, 10.5, 11, 11, 11.6 volts, but anyway the point is it works. I'm not going to attempt to start the car or anything like that. Just wanted to make sure it's all okay and happy. What I will do though is connect this. And I'll definitely be setting it to AGM now. Right, I'm going to get the car back together um, and we'll just have a bit of a recap at the end. Okay, so more or less all finished, covers back on, uh, weather strips are back on, covers reinstalled, I'll tighten those up in a second, uh, also, um, I didn't make a separate video on it, but I did, uh, change from the original Ferrari charger to an actual SeaTac. So in order to do that, you do just need an adapter, which is this. You can find these online. It was about um, 30 British pounds for one of these. And it comes with a cool little feature when you plug it in to tell you uh, whether you need charge, so red means the car probably won't tick over, uh, orange means it means it's just not fully charged, and green means it is fully charged. There we go. So, switch her on. It doesn't automatically detect it's AGM, I wouldn't expect it to. There we go, AGM. The strange thing, like I said to you before, is I, well, I've, I've got an AGM. There was an AGM battery in it, so I wonder if this whole time that I've been using this, it's not been charging correctly because I've never had it set to AGM mode. But it's clear by looking at this <laughs> that I have an AGM battery, so I cannot figure that out. But then what confuses me that says let oh I, I don't know i don't understand maybe if someone knows they can write in the comments but anyway if you're doing this yourself whether regardless of whether you have an agm battery or not just change it for an agm um chances are like me you probably do mine's a, a 2012 car without heli without uh, start stop so i've just gone agm anyway i'm bloody glad i did because looks like i had one and if you do Buy yourself one of these SeaTecs. Any modern SeaTec is going to have multiple modes for AGM. If you don't know whether you've got an AGM battery, you need to find out because, like me, you'll end up doing what I did, which was to charge the battery in non AGM mode. Um, and clearly, that's not charging it correctly. So, yeah. Anyway, 
that's another DIY done on the uh, old F car FF. <laughs> Hope that was helpful for some of you. If you are attempting this on your own, please, please don't give up. That battery will come out. Um, just keep moving it mill millimeter by millimeter. It gets easier with every millimeter out of the car. And then all of a sudden it'll just come out. Anyway, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, stay tuned for the next one.